हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम बैक टू माई प्ले लिस्ट ऑफ पैथोलॉजी हम जेनेटिक्स का चैप्टर कर रहे हैं फ्राम मीडियम रॉबिन्स एंड आफ्टर द डिसऑर्डर्स वेयर वी टॉक्ट अबाउट प्रॉब्लम्स इन द रिसेप्टर ऑफ सेल्स सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल वी टॉक्ट अबाउट सिस्टिक फाइब्रोसिस वी टॉक्ट अबाउट फेमिलियल हाइपर कोलेस्ट्रोलिमिया जिसमें जेनेटिक म्यूटेशन वो थी कि दोज वर अफेक्टिंग द सेल रिसेप्टर्स Now today we are going to start an, another section which is dealing with diseases which are caused by mutation in the genes which encode for enzyme protein. So here all the disorder that we study, uh, for example, in today's video we are going to talk about phenylketonuria. So there will be uh, a genetic mutation which will be affecting certain enzyme protein. Or if enzyme protein affect होगा तो कोई ना कोई मेटाबॉलिक रिएक्शन कोई ना कोई केमिकल रिएक्शन आपके बॉडी का विल बी अफेक्टेड सो लेट्स स्टार्ट डिस्कसिंग फिनाइल कीटोन यूरिया सो फिनाइल कीटोन यूरिया इन शॉर्ट नॉन एस पी के यू इट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट डिसऑर्डर रूटीनली टेस्टेड इन एग्जामिनेशन इट रिजल्ट फ्रॉम म्यूटेशन दैट कॉज इज अवियर लैक ऑफ द इंजाइम विच इंजाइम फिनाइल एलिन हाइड्रोक्सिलेज Now that is the enzyme which is affected. So, इस enzyme की जो भी gene होगी that gene is mutated. And as a result of mutation, what's basically happening? That this gene is not functional. Okay. Um, frequency wise, it is one in ten thousand live births with infants uh, or white infants. Obviously, a U.S. case starts there. And there are several variants of the disease. The most common form, referred to as classic phenylketonuria, is common in persons of Scandinavian descent. So they kind of uh, give you the association with a specific population, and is distinctly uncommon in African Americans and Jewish populations. So uncommon, remember, okay? Actually, I'm showing example. I'm telling you, it's not uncommon. The disease is very common in African Americans and Jewish, but it's uncommon, right? Now, as for other genetic disorders, disease can be uh, obviously homozygotes. जो होंगे homozygotes का मतलब ये है कि for that mutation, or uh, we know that we get one chromosome set from father, one from mother. So there will be a phenyl ketonuria uh, vali gene, P A H encoding gene, on father's chromosome, and then the same one on the mother's chromosome. If both of them are affected, this is what we call a homozygous form mutation, and this is also known as then autosomal recessive disorder. Um, there is a severe lack of phenyl alanine. Obviously, there will be because uh, phenyl alanine hydroxylase, because both the genes which would have coded for this enzyme, they are both missing, right? Now, affected infants are normal at birth, but within a few weeks, exhibit rising plasma phenyl alanine because this cannot be metabolized because the enzyme which is responsible for metabolism of this particular amino acid, uh, i.e., phenyl alanine hydroxylase, is missing. Okay. So what happens with the increasing level of phenyl alanine there is impairment of the brain development you know the brain development continues after birth usually by 6 month of life severe mental retardation is noticed uh, and it become very very evident less than 4% of the untreated phenyl uh, ketonuric children have intelligent quotient uh, greater than 60 so they are giving upper limit ke aur ye bhi kitne logon mein sirf hota hai only about 4% yani 96% of the people will have uh, iq level below this particular level so that shows ke how severely it is basically affecting the development of uh, nervous system about a third of these children are never able to walk two third cannot talk even so that i mean look at the severity of symptoms a baby severely compromised because increased levels of phenyl alanine are there right seizures other neurological uh, abnormalities decreased pigmentation of the hair skin eczema these things often accompany the mental retardation but primary problem remains the mental retardation right now hyperphenyl alanemia which means increased levels of phenyl alanine and the resultant mental retardation can be avoided by restricting Uh, the intake of phenyl alanine because you cannot metabolize phenyl alanine because this particular enzyme is missing so if you restrict uh, your diet uh, containing amino acid phenyl alanine that can actually delay the symptoms that can actually improve the situation a little bit and several screening procedures are routinely performed to detect uh, phenyl ketone urea um, in the postnatal period But because this is so severe you see that uh, one in 10000 people individuals born live are affected so there are good screening programs in place and they are picked up very early on many female patients with phenyl ketonuria who receive dietary treatment beginning early in life 
रीच चाइल्ड बियरिंग एज सो दैट्स अ गुड न्यूज कि अगर आप इसको पहले डिटेक्ट कर लें स्क्रीनिंग के थ्रू एंड देन यू रेस्ट्रिक्ट द डाइट एंड फिनाइल कीटोन फिनाइल एलन इन देन दीज गर्ल्स एक्चुअली रीच टू द चाइल्ड बियरिंग एज मोस्ट ऑफ दैम हैव मार्क्ड हाइपर फिनाइल एलिनीमिया ऑब्वियसली द लेवल्स ऑफ फिनाइल एलन विल बी हाई बिकॉज डाइट ट्रीटमेंट इज डिसकंटिन्यूड आफ्टर रीचिंग द एडल्ट हुड बिटवीन सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट टू नाइन्टी परसेंट ऑफ द चिल्ड्रेन बॉन्ड टू सच वुमेन आर मेंटली रिटार्डेड एज वेल माइक्रोसेफालिक Uh, it's a big number, 75 percent. 15 percent have congenital heart disease. Uh, this syndrome, termed as maternal phenyl ketonuria, result from the teratogenic effects of phenylalanine. So imagine the mom having high levels of phenylalanine passed on to the baby, and now the baby develops mental retardation. The presence and severity of fetal abnormalities directly correlate with the maternal levels of phenylalanine. Higher the levels in mom, uh, more severe the symptoms in baby. Okay. The biochemical abnormality in phenylketonuria is an inability to convert phenylalanine to tyrosine, which is the job of this particular enzyme, which is missing here. So it cannot be metabolized into tyrosine. In normal children, less than 50% of the dietary intake of phenylalanine is necessary for protein synthesis. The remainder is converted to tyrosine. So that's what happens normally in the body by the enzyme. which is the matter of discussion in this video when phenyl alanine metabolism is blocked because of lack of phenyl alanine hydroxylase the shunt pathway come into play yielding several intermediates that are excreted in large amounts in the urine as well as in sweat these impart a strong musty odor and these are the metabolites coming from the phenyl alanine so usually phenyl alanine should have been converted into tyrosine that's normal but if this is not working then phenyl alanine makes other things and those other things are excreted by sweat by kidney and those other things also damages the nervous system and this is what causes the brain damage okay concomitant lack of tyrosine because now phenyl alanine is not being converted into tyrosine Uh, it also has a consequence and this means that there is low melanin production so this should explain you why patients with phenylalanine have light hair color and skin color okay if we go down to the molecular level and uh, when we say molecular level that means to the genetic level approximately 500 different mutations have been identified even more than that infants with mutations resulting in severe lack of uh, phenylalanine hydroxylase activity present with the classic features so we have no per baat ki but sometimes the mutations are i mean depends upon what kind of mutation they've got symptoms may be milder and that is sometimes then known as uh, b9 hyperphenylalanemia okay because of the numerous disease causing alleles uh, in this gene complicate molecular diagnosis measurement of the serum phenyl alanine levels is used to differentiate between benign and malignant forms um, and that's important because this correlate not only with the symptoms but also if the female becomes pregnant it identifies the prognosis of the baby after biochemical diagnosis is established with the specific mutations also identified um by sequencing technologies such as ngs with this information carrier testing of at risk family member can be performed so that is then part of the genetic counseling currently enzyme replacement therapy is being tried as a method for reducing the levels of phenylalanine in the blood the replacement enzyme known as phenylalanine Uh, lyase converts excess phenylalanine to ammonia and other non-toxic metabolites so this is being tried as an alternative to phenylalanine uh, hydroxylase which is deficient in this disease right although 98% of cases of hyperphenylalanemia are attributable to the mutations associated with the phenylalanine hydroxylase there is approximately 2% um arise from abnormalities in the synthesis or recycling of the cofactor tetrahydro so that is uh, another pathway which should be um kept in mind when you are studying phenylalanine but that's a very very rare scenario most of the time this is because of phenylalanine mutation but since everyone knows about it examiners sometimes go after it and they are interested in knowing the um the remainder of the 2% which is associated with um the synthesis yeah recycling of cofactor which is tetrahydrobioterin 
Clinical recognition of these variants forms important because these patients cannot be treated by dietary restriction. So if this pathway is activated, then these patients cannot be uh, affected by phenylalanine key restriction because that is not even the problem. But they also require additional supplementation with tetrahydrobiopterin, uh, certain neurotransmitter precursors and folic acid. So you can uh, have a look at this. This is the phenylalanine hydroxylase system where phenylalanine is converted into tyrosine and the enzyme is phenylalanine hydroxylase. In 98% of the patients with uh, phenylalanuria, uh, the, this is uh, the pathway which is affected. The enzyme is not working, but sometimes uh, because this enzyme system required uh, some cofactors such as tetrahydrobiopterin, uh, if this pathway is affected, then you uh, should also consider uh, giving these as a supplement. Okay, so that's an important uh, discrimination from the most common, which is 98%, and this is the least common, which is 2%, but you should also. So for example, if you have got a patient where you identify the disease, phenyl ketone urea, um, and uh, you worked up and you know that, okay, I have uh, this mutation, you are assuming this is the mutation which is present, you restrict the phenylalanine in diet, but still the patient is not improving. Consider this uh, pathway which is defective, okay? So th this is all that you have to understand. Uh, the basic physiology, so going back to normal is something, something very, very important. And you have to, whenever you are studying pathology, consider what is normal, then what happens if something goes abnormal, okay? So all the very best. I'll see you in another video very, very soon. Take care of yourself.